Welcome to USA Football's Coach and Coordinator Podcast, where top football coaches from around the country share their stories, philosophies, concepts, and strategies to help you get better on and off the field. Now, here's your host, Keith Grabowski. Welcome to another week of the Coach and Coordinator Podcast. I really appreciate how this thing has grown. We just hit over 3 million listens last week, so thank you to all our listeners. Thank you to our incredible guests. We're going to do something different here this week as we have this shutdown, and we have been five days a week, but I think as things slow to a halt here, every day is going to feel like another, so the weekend probably will not distinguish itself too much from the week. And so for that reason, we'll air episodes seven days a week until things get back to normal here. Welcome to the Coaching Coordinator Podcast. I'm excited to be joined by someone who was with us back in our first year when we were just starting to grow. Uh, He's done an excellent job. He's heading into his fourth season now as the head football coach at West Virginia State, Dr. John Pennington. John, it's great to have you back here again. Yeah, thanks for having me, Keith. I was uh, actually listening to your podcast right before you called about practice planning, and there's so many good things on your podcast. I'm just want to say congratulations on being around for three years. And Chad, remember, you know, that first year did some stuff on red zone and things like that. And now, you know, three years later, you've grown a lot and it's awesome that you've, uh, what you're doing for the coaching industry. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. And I'm excited about what you've done as well. Um, you've been able to put your ideas together into a book called small wins equals big gains. And we're going to talk about your book here today on the podcast. And before we get into some of the details, I guess, what, what was it that inspired you to write this book? Well, I've always been interested in goal setting, uh, even as a, a middle school, high school student. And after high school, I uh, you know, wrote down that I wanted to play football for West Virginia University and catch a touchdown. And that was a pretty far-fetched idea at the time. I think there was, uh, there was probably one person that thought that would come true, and that was me. But uh, once I realized that dream and saw the power of goal setting and writing your goals down, I, you know, I really was into that, uh, have been since, you know, finding new ideas and uh, techniques that work through trial and error. And I do it with the student athletes I train uh, now as the head coach. I was, I was doing it every day for our student athletes, and I was uh, setting goals for myself and, and constantly uh, you know, trying to find ways to improve it. And then, uh, you know, I thought I'm, I'm doing this every day, and I see a major problem not with setting goals, although some people struggle with that, it's the staying with the goal that's the problem. So um, I figured I was doing this every day. I love to write, love to try and create and and find new ways to get better. So uh, I just sat down and started writing a book. And I used myself as a guinea pig, to be honest. I uh, I, I sat down for 30 minutes um, every morning before my my family woke up. And uh, it took me about 12 months to complete the book. Uh, 22 months real time because I took uh, I take five months off for football and recruiting every year. Right. Um, but 30 minutes a day, uh, that was my small win. I uh, just work on it before you know I got started for the day. And then uh, after a year, the book was complete, edited, and, and ready to publish. John, you said that the, the process for you, as, as you were goal setting yourself as a player, probably as a young coach, there was a lot of trial and error. What were some things that you found – don't work in the goal setting approach? Well, focusing on the outcome, <laughs> that's probably number one. You know, it's going it, to, it'll probably drive you crazy. If, you know, I wanted to be a head football coach by the time I was 30. And this was, I, I knew from the day I started coaching, I wanted to be a head football coach. So I, I had written that down and was, you know, constantly focused on that instead of the process that's going to make me uh, the kind of man that someone would want to hire as a head coach. And I think, I think that that constant focus on the outcome, even as a player uh, or a coach, you know, that you you want to be the starter as a player, you want to be a head coach as a as a young coach, it, it'll drive you crazy when instead you should focus on those small daily and weekly tasks that are going to get you to the point where you're ready to be that, you know, that head coach or that, that starter, uh, you know, as an athlete. So if you put this together into – um, a book and the subtitle of small wins, big gains is a complete step-by-step goal setting system to help you stay focused, take action and sustain discipline. So you can live your best life. And you mentioned to me before we got going is 
Um, you know, not only did you write this book, but this is the stuff that you live day in and day out. This is the stuff that you take your players through. Yeah, it, it's um, it, our players. They have we call it an academic playbook, and it has a lot of academic things in there. But it also has their goals. It has their um, their habit checklist. That's one of the main things we uh, that I discuss in the book is you know keeping track of those daily, weekly goals that lead you to that outcome that you desire. And that's that's kind of where the book it starts with you know setting those big goals. You know, getting those those major ideas out of your head and dreaming big and creating the life that you want to live. And then it breaks those goals down into those small daily habits that are going to create, um, you know, the big results down the road. So for instance, for myself in writing, you know, wanting to complete a book, my, my daily habit was 30 minutes every morning. It was just 30 minutes every morning. And, you know, there were plenty of times where I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I just thought, well, I'll just keep doing this. And if, if I don't quit, I'll eventually have a book. I didn't, you know, I had some time frames in mind and uh, you want to be specific with that. But at the end of the day, uh, if you just co- keep completing those little small wins, uh, it's going to end up being a, you know, something that's, that's huge for you down the road. And you don't really, you know, when you have those small wins, you don't really notice it over the first couple weeks or maybe after a couple of months, you start to realize it. And then, after a, a year or, or year and a half, then, you know, kind of everyone sees, wow, look, look at what, what this guy's done as far as if it's losing weight or trying to, you know, move up in your profession. It doesn't really matter what the goal is if you can stay on track with those small wins. So small wins, big gains is the name of the first chapter. And we're kind of just go through and give it an overview or maybe even a teaser of uh, what's going on there or maybe a story behind it. So, uh, you know, chap- chapter one, small wig wins, big gains. Talk to us about the main idea that you share there. Well, the, uh, kind of like I was talking about a little bit before, uh, is that, you know, when you set a goal, you know, you, it, you've heard of the smart acronym, you know, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and, and time specific. And that's, that's the basics of goal setting. So you, you want to definitely write down a goal that, that has those kind of things, but, the last two, um, you know, letters to that acronym people don't use a lot is uh, we say smarter, and I, I didn't make this myself, but uh, the last two letters, the E and the R, so after you make it specific and time, uh, have a timetable with it, uh, you want to evaluate and then, uh, you know, revise. So that's one of the key things in this whole thing is that you don't set goals and then just put it in your drawer and forget about it for the year. You know, you don't set a goal on New Year's and then forget about it, uh, and then pick it up, and you're, you're done at the end of the year. You got your goal. That's, that's the exact opposite of how it works. Zig Ziglar said, motivation is like bathing. We recommend it daily. And that's, that's my recommendation is that you, you evaluate your goals every day. You know, you, in the book, we write down, you know, you're the ideal version of yourself. You know, what kind of man or woman you want to be, uh, and you put it in the present tense. And I read that every morning, and I don't always live up to that. Uh, but I, I read it every morning. I know what kind of man I want to be and what I'm striving to accomplish. And it keeps it in the, in the forefront of my mind. And that's what we do with the goals. We, I read my goals every morning. Uh, and then I also read and revise them every night. So as I'm going along, if my small win is to create, you know, a 30 minute window or I write a book, uh, I, at the end of the night, I check off whether I accomplished that goal. And, and when you do, it kind of gives you a little hit of dopamine where you feel good about accomplishing something and you're, you're moving in the right direction. And that's, that's ultimately, you know, what I tried to create as an athlete or a coach, you know, we're all about winning <laughs> we're competitive and, uh, and I'm extremely competitive. And if I focus on the outcome of creating a book, I almost lose every day. till that book's complete. And I don't like to lose. So if I can create a way to, that, that, uh, shows me how to win, you know, okay, I did get a win. I did 30 minutes here. Uh, that was a win for the day and I can keep finding ways to get wins. The competitive nature takes over. And that's what I do with our players. Uh, in creating those small wins. And then when they look up after a year or two, now all of a sudden they're an all-conference player and they're kind of like, wow, this is, I can't believe how I got here with just these little incremental wins. It's interesting uh, you bring that up, you know, writing it down and reading it every morning. I've been studying uh, lately uh, just daily habits of, of successful people and are there things that they do? And a lot of them have a morning routine and a big part of it is exactly that. Some of it in a lot of these books I've been reading or podcasts I've been listening to, a lot of them call it affirmations. But the whole idea is 
um, that you read that daily to yourself, uh, you know, with not just, you know, reading it without emotion, but, you know, getting those, you know, that motivation behind it to do it. And, and the same thing at night, read it again and revise. And, you know, so that's not just something that John Pennington does. It's, it's something that's proven really, um, you know, for the people who reach elite level, that's something that's part of their daily habits. Yeah. I mean, I would recommend to any listener, if you do anything, you know, to start a morning routine and a night routine, both in your days with those two things. And it, you know, it, it doesn't have to be my morning routine is an hour, almost two hours long. It, it's grown, but I would say start with a, with a 10 minute, 20 minute, whatever, whatever time you have, even five minutes in the morning and in the night. And that one, those two little habits will make every other habit you have better because, you know, even if you just start with a morning routine, you're probably going to be a little more tired at night and you're going to get better sleep. You're going to, you're not going to mm-hmm. stay up so late. And, and that's, that's uh, one of the things we talk about in the book is it, it's having a keystone habit. And for me, it's that morning routine and that night routine bookending my days. everything. I can't control what happens during throughout my day, but I know that I have that morning and night routine. It's helped me sleep better as a result. I don't, I have no goals whatsoever to try and sleep more efficiently, <laughs> but the goal of having a morning routine created that, and that's kind of what, what we talk about for a key stone habit. Yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, I think you've, you've probably been there before. Um, and as I've started working with having those habits myself, you know, you, you know you could go to bed at night and kind of rest, sleep soundly. Uh, your mind's not racing a million miles an hour because you understand here's, here's my process, you know, and you're going to anchor it with the morning and then say, here's what we got to do tomorrow and then be able to get back to it again. And I've, I've found that, uh, being able to do that, you know, really has helped me a lot in just setting some of those things aside that race through your mind when, when you hit the pillow. Oh yeah. It's a a brain dump. (laughs) Get that stuff out of your mind and onto a paper or a, or, uh, I use Evernote on my phone a lot too. So just getting it out of my head, and on paper somewhere, it helps, like you said, it helps clear your mind. Just dump that stuff out somewhere and, you know, tackle it tomorrow. Exactly. Because from there you head into goal setting, and we mentioned that a little bit about what not to do, but uh, talk to us a little bit about what we could expect in uh, listening to or, or um, reading that chapter on goal setting. Well, there's three, three things that cause people to fail at achieving their goals, and I, I read a stat that kind of blew me away. Um, while I was, you know, working on the book, but 92% of people fail at, at achieving their New Year's resolutions. Um, 80% of those people fail within the first six weeks. It's kind of why the book came out six weeks into the new year. Um, and then another staggering number was that 86% of people that have a heart attack don't make last, lasting lifestyle changes. That, that to me really stuck out is that, wow, people, you know, it's not that they don't set goals, they just can't stay with them. And so that's, I started with, okay, why don't people stay with their goals? Number one is a lack of focus. You have to write down your goals. I can't stress that enough. You have to get it out, put it on a piece of paper. That's the best way or type it, uh, put it in your phone because it, it becomes real. You know, once you put that in, it becomes real. I tell recruits and players all the time, how can you hit a target you can't see? You know, if you don't have, if you can't see the target, you're never going to hit it. So uh, also with today's generation, I'll say, it's like putting an address in your GPS. You know, you wouldn't say you're going to go to the beach and just start driving south. You'll never get there. So put the exact destination you want in your GPS, you know, head football coach or all American or, uh, you know, whatever it is, writing a book, uh, put it down on paper. That's number one, that, that lack of focus is where people struggle. And then lack of action, take action, start now. Don't put it off until, you know, the summer or whenever, just start right now and start, doing something to move yourself forward. Um, you know, taking that action immediately is, is huge. And not only that, but taking con- consistent action. And that's where people start. They kind of start putting things off or, you know, I'll do it when I'm free. Start right now. Take, you know, work on something for five minutes a day. And, and, uh, and then the third thing is a lack of discipline. And that's where this system comes into play. Is it, you know, the, the worksheets that come with it, the time management worksheets, the, the daily uh, worksheet. And then there's a, uh, we create a one page document that has all your goals, all the things about what kind of man you want to be a personal mission statement, a personal vision statement on one page. So you can read it every day. And that's, 
I don't have 20 pages of goals. I've got one page where everything is on and I can read that in, you know, two to three minutes a day. And that's all it takes, you know, to create, you know, start creating these, uh, these big results. Before we jump into the, the next section, I want to pause there for a minute and talk a little bit about uh, I mean, I think we all certainly see the application to ourselves and, and how this could help us, uh, you know, whether that's as a coach, a husband, a father, et cetera. Uh, the, taking the players through that, right? Especially um, players who maybe even haven't been through the exercise of goal setting before and getting to, to them, uh, through to them that point that, uh, again, the, the focus to take action and being able to move to a, a, a point of doing things in a disciplined way. Um, what kind of results did you see with your players as you implemented this? I mean, uh, I've seen incredible results. You know, you, uh, you know, I've seen players that were probably the worst player on our football team to guys that are contributing in big moments on Saturdays. And I've seen guys that are you know, uh, maybe above average talent level that reached all conference, uh, you know, all region type status. Uh, and and I, I have a, a former quarterback, obviously, that I work with them the most. Uh, and we meet with our players every week on their academics and then their habits. And that's one of the things I talk to the parents of our recruits about, that I'm, I'm in charge. Of, I want to make sure they leave with the right habits. So uh, he messaged me the other day. He's actually uh, at, at the University of Georgia as an academic counselor, you know, and they're part of their athletic academic team. And he came up with his own academic playbook. He sent it to me the other day and he just talked about, you know, as a player, uh, I, I hated doing this stuff. You made me do it. And then, you know, now I, I can't, you know, imagine my life without it and how much it helped me as a player. Uh, but, I, you know, we every week I'll meet with my quarterbacks on their academics and their habits. I'll be, we'll go down, okay, you know, your goal is to be a captain what is the small win you're doing every day to create that? You know, are you talking to a different teammate every day? Are you breaking down the team? I mean, even as simple as that, um, you know, the, the, our players are, okay, if I want to be a captain, I can't just say that. I got to do these little things to be that captain other than working hard and, you know, being a guy that does well in the field. So uh, I, I see it every day when I meet with my guys and, and those light bulbs come on that, okay, why is this not happening? Well, what are you What are you doing every day to achieve it? If you're not If you're not getting there, then let's let's adjust. Um, and sometimes, Keith, and I'm the same way. Sometimes my goals are just too ambitious, you know. And I and that's what that that's what evaluating every night and at the end of the week, kind of keeping score. Okay, if I'm if I'm only fifty percent of what I'm trying to achieve, then I need to I need to scale it back, or I need a, a kick in the rear end to get moving better. Sometimes it's guys are achieving every goal they wrote down. And that's, that's not good either. You're not stretching yourself. So a lot of times I can, I can get a, a feel for, you know, is this guy just trying to meet the bare minimum or, you know, let's stretch your goals a little further. You know, you, you could do a little more than that. And so it really helps us communicate uh, and, you know, stay focused on, you know, the end result, which is them achieving what they want to achieve and reaching their potential. One of the words I think that stuck out to me here in, in this, uh, you know, next section of chapters is the word intentionality. How important is it to be intentional? And, and how do you, I guess, teach intentionality to your players? Well, I, I read um, Urban Meyer's book, Above the Line, a few years ago. And, you know, a lot of that book was about living your life on purpose. And I thought that was, um, you know, an incredible lesson to teach our players and what he taught at Ohio State. So we, we, we really, a lot of that I got is from him. Uh, and then with the goals one, it was, it, it was that exact thing. It was, it was living your life on purpose. And I think that's a much, you know, we don't have control over a lot of the things in our life, but uh, we do have control over our attitude about it. We have control over how we respond to the things that happen and how, if we look, whether we look at it as a, a failure or a success or a growing moment. And that's what I'm trying. I mean, that is the biggest thing that I'm trying to teach to our players is, you know, they're 18 to 22 years old. They were on top of the world and now they come to college and it's, it's totally different. Uh, everyone there is, an, you know, a great player. So that that one lesson right there is probably the one lesson I hope they take, you know, from from playing at West Virginia State is that, you know, live your life on purpose. You know, don't don't play the victim uh, when something bad happens to you. Stay focused on, you know, what you're trying to achieve and why this is going to help you get there. There's always a lesson buried in in adversity and uh, that there's a little bit in the book. And I, there's a, a story in there I thought was a, 
people about Justin Willoughby, uh, who he, he has a, a slogan called One Step Nation, and he was a 800 pound teenager and was gonna wasn't gonna live very long, and he, he started a uh, he started his workout was taking one step. It was standing up in his couch and taking one step and then going right back uh, to his couch. And, and that was what he started with. And then a, uh, a couple years later, you know, he lost 600 pounds and he's an, he's a trainer. Uh, and it all started with that one step. And he was, he was, you know, he didn't, wasn't worried about his weight, wasn't worried about anything, but taking that one step. And, you know, if you live your life on purpose like that, I think, you know, you, it kind of helps you stay, keep away from the distractions and, uh, you know, that little man on your shoulder. Coach, you, you talk about positive habits and productive routines. And I know we mentioned, you know, the morning routine, the nightly routine. Um, but talk to us a little bit more about forming those habits, because I think you'd agree that that's a big part of being able to knock down a big goal that you might set is that the habits uh, the routine, the discipline, those have to have to be developed along the way. Yeah, that, I mean that's the biggest thing. I mean, I, I am a, I am extremely ambitious, a dream big guy. I always have been, and I think that's kind of why this uh, I've kind of dived into this um, small wins process oriented goal setting is because I need it more than anybody. Um, but yeah, I think that um, you know having that keystone habit, I think, is huge. You know, that's the one habit that makes all your other habits better for me. It's my morning routine. Uh, it might be, you know, I also have a gratitude journal I write in at night. It helps me focus on the things I'm grateful for. Um, but that that's the key to everything, and that's that's why you don't want to have a diet plan that says I'm going to eat kale every day for a year because it's never going to last. I mean, once the initial motivation wears off, uh, you're not going to be able to keep up with that. And I. I've started uh, recently started trying to meditate and I started with two minutes. I did two minutes every morning. And I think you can do that with any goal. It doesn't have to be. And that's the whole point of the book is start with a small win. You know, 30 minutes a morning is not asking a lot to, uh, to, to write a book or, you know, two minutes of meditation every morning. That's not that hard. It doesn't take a whole lot of willpower, but once it becomes a routine and autom- you know, an automatic habit, uh, then I can add to that. And that's called habit stacking. We talk about that in the book. Once you create that little win, then you can add to it. My morning routine used to be 20 minutes. Now it's two hours, you know, and, and how do you know when a, when a habit becomes automatic is when it, it becomes an investment um, instead of an expense. That makes sense. Instead of dreading waking up in the morning and having to do a one hour workout, you know, for me, I've changed to, you know, yoga in the morning and meditation. And that helps me. It's still something that gets my heart going, my the blood pumping. Uh, but it's something that's it doesn't take a whole lot of willpower, you know, and I'm excited to get up and do it. You know, I, I almost can't function without it. I have to have it. So once that became automatic, then I started adding to it. So that's what I my main recommendation is start a small habit, work out for 10 minutes or, you know, do read a book for five minutes and uh, if you do that consistently, sometimes, you know, if I wanted to read or work on my book for 30 minutes, you know, sometimes that 30 minutes would turn into an hour because I just kind of got into that focused mode and kept rolling. Sometimes I'd struggle through that 30 minutes, but it, that 30 minutes was automatic. And I think that's what you do with, with any of your habits and uh, especially that keystone habit, you know, that morning or night routine or, or whatever, staying away from soda, whatever that is, just start it. Man, you hit on a lot of key things there, and, and actually I'm doing a lot of those things right now, and it's been part of, I don't know, I'm, I'm maybe three, four months into this. It was right before the the new year, I think, I started doing some of this stuff, but the meditation was one. Uh, the uh, the writing, um, I don't, I have a hard time like keeping a specific journal, but I, I make it a point to uh, to write and get some of those thoughts down. Uh, the The yoga in the morning, even if just for a little bit, actually they're shorter routines. I, I try to grab one off of uh, YouTube and, you know, work on some different poses, but like you would not believe, you know, at, at first it's, especially if you wake up earlier to do this, a little bit difficult, it's new, but man, you get into that for just a couple of weeks and you start building, like you said, habit stacking. Um, it's a, just an amazing process. And again, something I've been studying, all those things you'll, you'll find consistently. Um, and it's, it's in every profession, you know, the, the top businessmen, entrepreneurs, salesmen, uh, elite athletes, 
generals, whatever you want to you know look at. Uh, those are a lot of the habits that those people have in their day. A lot of the routines that they have in their day are those things that you mentioned right there. Yeah. And I think everyone's a little different. You might have, you know, I'm a morning person, but you know, if you're a night owl and you get your most creative work done at night, you know, that might be the time to, to do, you know, to do yoga and write and do the creative side of it. But I, I think that every, yeah, everyone you see that's successful is, is being able to devote, you know, some, some personal time to, you know, kind of get your mind in the right place and, you know, take advantage of, of when you're the most creative. I mean, the, I mean, obviously there's, there's, we have all have those mundane tasks that we have to do every day with our Google calendar or our email list. And, um, but you know, that's why I think why not start the day. I don't do, you know, I don't do work in the morning. I do things that are going to, you know, grow, you know, either, you know, our program, myself as an individual, uh, you know, you want to start that day with a win and you want to do something that you, that you really want to do that you don't have time throughout the day to do. And that's, that's, that's how I wrote my book. And that's how, you know, I encourage our players, you know, you know, do something that, that you really want to do in the morning when you're most creative and that's something that's going to really move you forward. Yeah, that, that's a, a big point there. And again, something that's come up in studying it is like, don't hop right into work in the morning. That, that stuff is going to be there. That time, these kind of routines should be 100% focused on uh, your own personal development. It's just a great yeah. time to form those habits that, are going to set you up for success in your work. And it's not always the easy thing to do. I mean, if you're a very motivated person and there's those goals you've set within, you know, your job to do things, I mean, it's easy, you know, especially for a coach, right, to to get up right in the morning and and jump right back into the game plan or watching film or whatever it might be. It's still very important. And it's, you know, even, you know, you, you go to the studies and I don't have any of the facts in front of me, but, you know, it's good for your health. You know, it's good for your longevity, um, and, and even your mental health to, to not, you know, quote unquote, burn out, uh, that you're doing some things like that. Well, I, I read a book, um, called, uh, 10 minute toughness. And, um, I can't think of the author's name right now, but he was the mental, uh, mental toughness trainer for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's Jason Selk, but, uh, we do this routine with our players. Uh, it, it's a, a morning routine where you, you, you basically visualize, First, you read your goals and then you visualize where, you know, yourself achieving those goals and then you visualize your entire day. So, I mean, that's yep. in the morning. I'm, I'm visualizing everything I have to do for that day, including reading to my kids at night and, and just kind of go give it a once over. That way, you know, when, I, when, I, when the day happens, you know, I've already kind of – I have an idea of where, where my day's headed. Yeah. Again, visualization, another part. I, I, the one book I read, uh, and it's a real – easy read um it's called miracle morning it's it's by a guy who's an entrepreneur and he came up with the acronym savers which incorporates a lot of these things and i think he even says like i am not the guy who came up with any of these this is just the habits of of you know high performing people uh successful people and so the the s uh stands for savers is the acronym the s stands for uh, silence. And that's for him. He made this fit. That's the meditation part, right? To be able to just sit and be with your thoughts and meditation is not uh, an, an easy thing to do. I mean, it, it is so hard to keep your mind focused actually on nothing on just your breath. And that's the whole point of it. Um, you know, to, to be able to step aside from all those thoughts. Uh, the A is for the affirmations. We talked about that reading your goals, reading those things that you want to be, uh, again, not just looking at the words on the page, but having some of the emotions and motivation behind them. Uh, the V is for visualization, like you mentioned, visualizing your day, visualizing the things you need to do to be successful. And they're those little things that are today. This is not looking, like you said, don't look at that goal at the end. It's what do I actually need to do today? So for example, if you're somebody focused on losing weight, I mean, you're visualizing making those right choices, right? Visualize yourself going to the fridge and, and taking the right thing out of the fridge, whatever it might be. Um, again, proven uh, to be effective for a lot of people. The E was for exercise. We mentioned that even to get, you know, maybe it's a quick walk or a little yoga. And right in the, you know, the beginning of this routine, the R is for read. We mentioned that. And again, um, the recommendation isn't to get into reading about your job or things like that. But again, looking for those personal development types of things. And the last one uh, is writing. And he put it as as the S in savers for scribe. And scribe you know those thoughts whether it's journaling or reflecting on the past day and 
you know, you've you've hit on all of them, John. You you are doing those things. Um, and and again, it's you know something I've been working on. I'm not good at all those yet. Uh, some of them I've I've become better at. I'm I'm working on what you said, habit stacking and building this routine. Um, but uh, a highly effective way to work is is to have those productive routines. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I think you gotta you want to you want to like look forward to that end result. So you, I, I constantly visualize our, our, our team and myself holding up that conference championship, you know, trophy at the end of the season. And, um, you know, it's, and I try to feel the feelings of, of achieving how I'll feel, you know, the amount of relief and, and enjoyment and fulfillment I'll have for myself and my team. And uh, it, it makes it, you know, kind of makes you crave it that much more, um, you know, going forward. Definitely. Well, well, John, you finish this up, your, your last part. You talk about, um, you know, kind of bringing this all together. Have a plan, work the plan, love the process. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, it, it starts, this is a comprehensive system. So, you know, it, it's going to help you from the, just even from the beginning of writing it down to the end of achieving the goal. Um, and, you know, you, I, I, I recommend just using whatever you want as an example, but uh, just just taking something, writing it down, and using the the stuff in the book, but having that plan uh, of your ultimate goal. You know, dreaming big, give you that ideal life or something you would feel successful achieving. Uh, put that down. You know, you have to get it on paper uh, because it makes it a real living you know thing uh, that you've held yourself you know a contract with yourself. And then you know, work the process. That's that's the bulk of the book. You know, putting things. Uh, barriers in your way to kind of keep you like I love cheese it's you know but I gotta give I'll eat them all day if you if you put them in the house uh, you know so keeping those things out of the house you know or setting up my uh, my clothes for the next morning kind of it, it sets the intention of okay I'm gonna do this it kind of makes you've already like affirmed like okay the clothes are out in the morning this is happening you know I'm gonna work out or I'm gonna do whatever um, so just working that process and, and it has to be a daily thing or you know the more consistently you can do it uh, the better your chances of achieving it. So that's what the system really does. It, it puts it into something small that you can, you know, you can read your goals every day and not sit there for an hour. Uh, and it's, it's easy, you know, you just, you just do it over and over again. Uh, and, and there's, you know, there's proven, there is some science in the book with, you know, how, why this works, how it works. There's studies that show you that, um, you know, if you write it down, read it every day and give yourself feedback, you know, that your chances of achieving your goal are like nine times better. And I, I know that someone listening to that's probably like, well, no, you know, no, of course that's going to work. And that's why I say, well, why not do it then? <laughs> it's that obvious. Uh, and then enjoy, you know, in, enjoy it. Love, love the process. I mean, that's life's a journey. And I, that's why I try to, you know, have big goals, but I don't want to stay focused on it. I know that, uh, you know, that there, there's a plan for me and I just try and enjoy every day the best I can. And that's my approach. You know, I, I know as a head football coach, my day is going to be crazy. You know, I, I, instead of being, you know, 90% of my days are just filled with who knows what issues that pop up. And instead of being pissed off 90% of the time and only happy 10% of the time, I kind of go about it the exact opposite. I expect things to show up in the middle of my day and just throw me off course. So when it does, I find a solution and I move forward. And I know that my, my morning and night routine are going to keep me in the right place. And then that 10% of the time when things go right, you know, I celebrate, I give myself a self high five, or I just think, man, that was a really good day. You know, I really love my job. But um, so I think that it, finding a way to enjoy that process and, and an approach that keeps you, you know, not derailed, you know, not from derailing off the path. And that's, that's what this process does. It keeps you, you know, you get excited when you're, when you're, you know, staying on track. Progress is the best motivation. So you see yourself achieving these little wins. You're not going to worry about, you know, you know, not, not achieving that ultimate goal because if you just don't quit, you'll eventually get there. And that's what this book does. Helps you stay on track. So you don't quit. Uh, you know, you create that plan, you know, you, uh, you work the process and then you, you know, you love it along the way. Again, the book is called small wins, big gains coach. Where can our listeners get the book? Well, the book's on Amazon. Uh, you can get the ebook on Amazon or you can uh, order the paperback. And I have a website. Uh, it's coachjohnpennington.com. And on my website, I, you, know, you can buy the book. There's blogs. There's videos. I'm going to have classes. I'm going to have, um, you know, hopefully a podcast and different things that I'm doing down the road of 
And it's all about personal growth. That, that's what I, I love. I nerd out on how to get better and improve. Uh, and I really like, you know, helping other people, you know, make positive changes. And it always, it always helps me make changes too. Even just talking with you, just already motivated to try some new things uh, that, that you've kind of inspired me to do. But uh, that's what I'm all about. And that's where you can find it. Well, Coach, uh, thanks for providing this resource for coaches. And certainly thank you again for joining us here on the podcast. Yeah, thanks again for having me, Keith, and uh, look forward to uh, talking to you here in the future and um, listening to your podcast.